there's a there's a big soul aster on the screen behind you oh wait no it's not a soul aster it's an astinactus or something like that that's one of the rarest sea stars known Hi, I'm Jamie Zachariah with Ocean Exploration Trust. And at OET, we are super proud to say that all of the data and samples that we collect during our expeditions are available for any scientist anywhere in the world to use. And it's super exciting when one of those scientists discovers something new using them. Today, we're gonna to talk to Dr. Christopher Ma, whose new paper talks about the new species and even genus of sea stars that he discovered using samples collected from OET's EV Nautilus and other ships in the Pacific. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Ma. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Hi, Jamie. Uh, thank you. So um, I'm a scientist at the National Museum of Natural History. Uh, I reside within the Department of Invertebrate Zoology, which studies animals without backbones. In particular, I study sea stars. I am the world authority on sea star diversity, which means that when someone has a new sea star, they give me a ring and I pick up the phone and say, yes, uh, that is either a new species or it is not. I, I went to school for biology and um, taxonomy is something that feels so old, but so important. Can you explain what is taxonomy and why do you study it? Taxonomy in, in the kind of classic sense is the filing system of animals in biology. It, it sounds kind of boring, but the truth is that taxonomy branches out into a number of other fields because it's it, it involves so many different kinds of disciplines that that require input as far as the concluding statements. I often liken what I do to the uh, characters in a play. You have a whole entourage and you have a whole dynamic, but you don't know any of that until you get the characters and you understand what the characters are doing. The discovery is part of it, but but sometimes you get so much more story from the dynamic of this animal. And I try to get the most out of that and bring as much to the, the broader field as I can in order to make that discovery um, part of the grander fabric of biodiversity, or, or in this case, deep sea biology. So can we talk about this paper? Congratulations on your oh. paper. <laughs> um, tell me about these uh, sea stars. So um, the paper described, forgive me if I've forgotten the number off the top of my head, but it was something like six or seven new species, and it was uh, at least one or perhaps uh, two new genera. These are all members of a wide ranging family called the Goniasteridae. Uh, the Goniasteridae is the most diverse family of sea stars within modern asteroidia. So basically what that means is that there's a lot of them and there are probably more of them to come. In this case, the core members of the paper that I described were based on a trip that I took up to your repository at the Museum of Comparative Zoology in Boston. Basically the museum where all of the Nautilus specimens are deposited following collection. And all of the material from uh, your Hawaiian cruises was there. So I figured, well, it'll probably be a bunch of the stuff that I saw before. And some of it was, but it turned out a good chunk of it was not. So I, I you know, the first or second jar I looked at, I was like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. That's not something that I recognize at all. And, you know, and that was that genus Ahuastra. And, you know, and, and that's the nice thing about a lot of these is that sometimes you don't need any kind of molecular work to, to say that's new because you just look at it and you're just like, oh, pff, you know, that doesn't look like anything that that's known, uh, you know, and it's always a delight to see something that I haven't seen before because, you know, every new species, every new genus is conceivably, uh, you know, some important event in the evolution of these sea stars. You know, at OET, we specialize in taking our remotely operated vehicles to the bottom of the sea to live streaming it, to capturing it on video, as well as physical sampling. What would you say is the importance of having not just in situ sampling, but the live video footage and the other kind of sensor data that we collect? So at first, I just thought that the in situ video was great for observing the species and what they were doing. Even if it's only kind of anecdotal, it's kind of a snapshot. And I thought, oh, well, this is kind of cool. And, you know, we're, and, and then, in a, and I started noticing these were being watched by more than scientists, that there were 
people who were just fascinated by this whole dynamic. And, you know, and, and there's an educational component that takes on almost a, a fan level. I mean, I guess the more appropriate term would be citizen science. This was something that was news to me because, you know, I, I there, there, there was, I, I'm old enough that I remember a time when basically all the animals that I studied were known by maybe a dozen people at most. Now, you know, there are people on, on social media that are pros, they're citizen scientists, not trained who just picked up entirely from social media, having watched these live streams, the difference between these things. And they do us a tremendous service because they often annotate or write down or label their videos based on what some of the narratives indicate. And then we can find them later. So they do us a tremendous service sometimes in a being able to crowdsource annotations. It is an impressive and, and I think very telling notion for the public that that they're so willing to help and you know they're so generous about providing this assistance that wouldn't exist without the public but also the video and being able to provide that video so that everyone could see and enjoy them absolutely we have a lot of nautilus fans and we're very <laughs> proud we're very proud of the fact that our live streams allow people to participate in deep sea exploration no matter where they live and in real time dr Ma, thank you so much for talking to us today congratulations on your new paper and here's hoping that this year and the next few years we'll be uh providing with much more information, many more samples and videos to look at and maybe discover some more species. I'm looking forward to it and I thank you for being such a charming host and I appreciate everything that you and the teams on your ships uh, does for the scientific community and for my work as well. So uh, looking, like I said, eventually I hope to get up to Boston, looking forward to seeing the additional material and to see what comes off of uh, the Nautilus next. So thanks very much. We want to thank Dr. Moth for talking to us today about his amazing new discoveries and all about sea stars and remind you that you can follow along with our exploration anywhere in the world, any time of day by checking out nautiluslive.org and hopefully you'll be there next time we discover something new.